All right, welcome back to the Per Ankh Hour Questions and Answers. Uh, we've got Brother Kaba Kabane, also known as Booker T. Coleman, on the line. Hotel Brother Kaba, how you doing tonight? Hotel Brother M. Hotel, I'm doing excellent, Brother. How you doing? Oh, I'm fantastic, brother. Just talked to uh, Dr. Umar Johnson also, brother. Fantastic. <laughs> I was on the call with Brother Umar. Yes, okay. Yes. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Well, um, once again, family, this is the Per Ankh Hour Questions and Answers show. If you have any questions from tonight, tonight's teaching that uh, Brother Kaba just wrapped up on Town Zone TV, tonight's topic, this is class number 12. We're dealing with the Shabaka Stone Biochemistry, the Carbon Atom, the mel- uh, melanin molecule, the melanosome granule, and the melanocyte cell. Okay, so if you have any questions about tonight's teaching or the past uh, 11 weeks uh, previous classes or uh, any questions in general, give us a call, area code 914-338-1375. Press number one key to put you in queue so we can bring you on the air. Please turn down your computer, listen through the telephone because there is a delay and you're going to miss your opportunity uh, to ask your question. And please write down your questions if you can or jot down the bullet notes so we can try to get through as many questions as as possible in this hour that we have. Um, Brother, why don't you give, um, if you don't mind, give people uh, just a brief overview of what you covered uh, tonight. Well, you know, Brother, tonight was a a really uh, very important class. Uh, because of the nature of going into the Shabaka Stone, after all that we've covered uh, as it relates to photosynthesis and plants and humans and melanin and the parts of the skin that we spoke about, we got Mm -hmm. into the periodic table of elements and the explanation of different uh, atoms and elements from hydrogen to helium uh, to uh, beryllium, lithium, You know, and then we got to number six, which is carbon. And we got a very clear understanding of what carbon is, where it came from, its origins, the sense of its importance, the sense of its importance not just on the earth, but in the cosmos and its creation and what it creates. And so it was a very important class as it relates to looking at carbon and what carbon is, because as we know, the biomineralist Dr. Sebi, and his wife's sister, Ma'at, they often, they, they, they often will recognize the importance of melanin, but they often say it's carbon that you've got to look at. That's what's important because that's what makes up the melanin. That's what makes melanin black. And that's okay, very fine. important to understand, and that's why I felt tonight's class was so important, in order to understand what carbon is and its okay. importance. And we spoke about the... Um, melanin, uh, uh, the melanin molecule. I showed a picture of what it is using the work of Dr. Carol Barnes in his book, okay. Melanin, the Chemical Key to Black Greatness. Uh, we looked at the, uh, we, well, we looked briefly at the uh, melanosome, which is a granule or an organelle that works, and then inside we looked at the enzymes that do the work for the melanosome, which would be tyrosinase and peroxidase, and the melanin uh, um, copper complex, which makes all that work. They're like little workers inside that melanosome making the production of melanin. And that is in a, really in a, putting it all together is what we did today because we talk about melanin. I hear a lot of people talk about melanin, and that's great. I hear Mm -hmm. people talk about black is beautiful. That's great. But black is not beautiful just because we say it is or because we're trying to say the opposite of what has been said about uh, being black is everything bad and ugly and all the rest of that. I want folk to understand why black is beautiful from a scientific perspective. Black is not only beautiful, black is the only thing that really exists, and everything that comes out of the blackness are all the other things that exist in the cosmic universe. But the universe is black. Right, right. Right. Now, now, when you um, say the universe is black, uh, just explain that uh, briefly. And it also what I want to let people know is for some additional information on this, what people can do is uh, if they go to answers.com, okay, and type in melanin, it's going to come up and reference various encyclopedias, medical encyclopedias, things like this, and gives them a breakdown. It gives them an overview of melanin. It, it deals with some of the 
terminology you're using, uh, terosinase, melanocytes, uh, things like this, and it, it gives them just an overview, some type of framework to work with so they can better understand the information that you're talking about on Town Zone TV and on the show. Okay, so that's, that's a, a free resource that people can go to immediately to start breaking some of these things down. And then also for some of the terminology, they also pronounce it for you as well, okay, to help with the understanding of it as well. But, but go ahead, brother. Uh, how, uh, what, what do you mean when you say the universe is black? Because for some people, they think this is just some black nationalist talk or, you know, something like that. <laughs> well, the, well, the other thing I want to say is that anyone that would be interested, I, uh, if they email me, I will mm, sure. return, attach back to them my melanin book list that lists many of the great books that they could get that deals with mm -hmm. melanin, from Laila Africa's book on melanin to Patricia Newton's book on melanin uh, to Dr. Richard King uh, to uh, Dr. Jewel Pukram. Uh, I mean, you can go down the line, Carol Barnes, all of these different books. There are books out there that can be read. So if they want my yeah. book list on it, all they got to do is um, email me at commonA777 at AOL.com, K-A-M-E-N-E-777 -E at AOL.com. And I will return back to them my book list along with my study guide where I have a 17-part series on melanin starting with yes. solar and cosmic melanin straight to every part of your body, from your respiratory system to your circulatory system and the role that melanin plays in the functioning of every one of those systems, including your excretory system, digestive system, and reproductive system. As I speak of the universe is black, I encourage anybody, I'm not sure where people may be at this point as it relates to time, but in New York okay. City, it's 1018. And what I would recommend anybody to, uh, that would be in the night sky is to go over to your window and look out and tell me what color you see. So when okay. I say the universe <laughs> is black, I'm saying, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right there right, in front right. of us to see. Right. The universe right. is black. And the stars that you see are born out of that blackness. Those mm, stars okay. that you see, as tonight's class spoke about, is made up of the dark matter that has condensed in on itself to the point where there is no more space to move, so it explodes. And that is what creates the stars. The same way coal, under pressure, becomes a crystallized diamond, we spoke about that this right. evening. Right, right. Two about does that um, everything great. on the planet. Mm -hmm. Everything comes out of blackness. Right. That is just a simple scientific uh, uh, concept of thought. This is not black nationalism. This is what Germans should be saying. Right. This right. is what <laughs> blonde hair, blue eyes, uh, uh, depigmented skin people should be saying. This is not something that is just for darker complexion people, well melanated people to say. This is a fact of scientific reality. Right, right. And by the way, exactly. this darkness does not make you superior, nor does it mm -hmm. make you inferior. So I'm not trying to right. say that either. Because right. I know oh, no, too I'm many well pigmented people ain't acting right. Correct, me too. Me too. So I'm not trying <laughs> to say that there is any sense of super now biologically there's a superiority, and that's okay. simply well, because that is the way the human family was meant to be born to survive. Right, right, and we deal with recessive genes. It relates to and, the and, spiritual and, uh, essence of somebody that being a well pigmented uh, makes you superior. I'm not saying that. Right. Although, okay. we'll talk about that. But that's a whole other thing. Okay, and and then we deal with genetically dominant. Uh, genes, genetically recessive genes, things like this also. Uh, okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll go to the phone lines in just a minute. We'll be going to the 864 first. If you have a question or comment, give us a call, 914-338-1375, 914-338-1375. Press the number one key to put you in queue so we can bring you on the air. Please write down your questions if you can so we can get through these exped expeditiously. Also, be, uh, when you're on the phone, listen to the phone and not the computer. Turn the computer down because there's a delay and you, uh, you, you're going to miss us coming to you. 
All right. Uh, now, now, Brother Copper, when, um, when you talked about uh, Imhotep and the Step Pyramid of Saqqara, and you talked about the Pythagorean Theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, and I've heard you talk about this before, about uh, Pythagoras or Pythagoras, I think is how you pronounced it. Uh, you were saying that, uh, I remember when you were here in 2010 for the convocation of the African village, you, you were saying that Pythagoras was actually pronounced Pythagoras, is that correct, or something like that? Pythagoras, yes, absolutely. Pythagoras. Now, is that in relation to Pata, the, 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 netter, the netter Pata? Yes, absolutely, because basically uh, Pata is, is the creator force. Pata is the um, creator of creators. He is the one at the potter's wheel. He is the, uh, the, the hill that comes up out, of the, up out of the water. He is the blacksmith, the creator of things. And all of the things that um, this individual came, he corrected his name. His, it's Pata. The pi comes out of the concepts of, you know, the mathematical concepts of, of, of yeah. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But, but basically, you know, you're dealing with a man who changed his name to Pata Gora. Okay, Pata Gora. Now, and, uh, and they did it constantly like that. Uh, what do you mean, did what constantly like that? They took everything we had. They took our name. Oh, yeah, they, you know, I mean, they just took everything. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, when 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 you say that, um, uh, now now was Pythagoras a real person? Was this a real mathematician? From what we know, um, you know something. I would be very uh, careful. Uh, I would, for this moment, say that it is very possible that he did exist. His name might not okay. have been what it is. Uh, he may not have been. He could have been an African that you know that Europeans you know just took and made him into, just like they did Beethoven, I mean, they made him into a European, although he was a black Correct. man. You, Correct. you know, I mean, Correct. so, I mean, it, it's not beyond them to take black folk and make them into their own heroes and sheroes. So, but I want to be careful right. because, honestly, I don't know. And, and okay. I don't know if anybody else knows either. Yeah, they did that but with But I do Lawrence know and... that the name was not Pythagoras. That I know. Right. And, okay. and that goes into the writings of the ancient philosophers. Uh, if you're dealing with Iamblichus, you can look at Iamblichus's work. Uh, you can look at work like um, like Egypt versus Greece, edited by uh, Dr. Malefi Asante. Uh, you can mm. look at uh, William Leo Hansberry's work, um, Africa and Africans as seen by the ancient Greek and Roman writers. And you can see, uh, you can uh, go back... Uh, and and look at Black Athena. They, you know, um, um, Martin Bernal talks about it. So that I mean, there are books out here that you can get and you can read and see uh, okay. that they have done a number of different things that are not that are just not um, true. <laughs> they they, okay. they tell untruths. They steal people's uh, invent. Like today, I was looking at a piece and they and you know uh, they were talking about. Um, uh, storm chasers, right, because of the unfortunate okay. incident that occurred in Oklahoma City on Monday. Right. And so I right. saw a man on TV that wrote a book entitled Storm Kings, where he's talking about the early um, uh, uh, tornado chasers, right? Mm -hmm. And he's talking about Ben Franklin was the first storm chaser. Okay. okay. <laughs> you, you see, now, now Native American people, we're aware of tornadoes for thousands of years. Right. And they said that Ben Franklin was the first storm chaser because he chased it on a horse. But what the man didn't say was that Benjamin Franklin was the uh, secretary for Indian Affairs. And that most of his inventions had already been done. Kite flying was a, a practice by Native American for hundreds if not a thousand years. Yet all of a sudden, he's given credit with sending a kite up into the heavens and creating electricity. Right, right. <laughs> right, exactly, in the first exactly. Thousands of years, indigenous people are here, and nobody decided to chase the tornado. Ben Franklin is the first person to choose to chase. Now, this man sounded very educated. This man presented mm. himself 
with dignity, finesse, and some type of in intellectual abilities. But the man right. is stone cold ignorant. Right. And that's the problem because listening to this man, you would walk away believing, yeah, Ben Franklin did that. But if you didn't know that he was the uh, uh, Secretary for Indian Affairs, if you didn't know he was the Secretary of the Patent Office, you would not realize he stole indigenous people's inventions and put his name on them. <laughs> That's like Aristotle, <laughs> when, when Aristotle gains access to the libraries in ancient Kemet because of uh, Alexander the Greek. Next thing you know, Aristotle was the author of about a thousand books and manuscripts on all different subjects. <laughs> and, you know, you see, here's what you got to do when you study these folk, because, okay, because he gives credit. He gives credit to Plato for being mm -hmm. his teacher. Who, Aristotle. Okay? Aristotle gives credit to Plato for being his teacher of all okay. things good and wise. Okay. But Plato is known as a philosopher. Aristotle mm -hmm. was known as a scientist. So how is your master teacher going to teach you a science that he is into philosophy? So, okay, say that again. You said how, how is it that your master teacher is going to do what again? It's like, going, it's like going for your Ph.D. in philosophy, and mm -hmm. your teachers teach you, so when you graduate, you, be, you get your Ph.D. in science. Right, Plato right. was a philosopher. He wasn't a scientist. Mm -hmm. Aristotle is known as a scientist. So how could his master teacher teach him a subject that Plato didn't even study to that level? Okay. Plato right, was right, a philosopher. Right. He wasn't a scientist. Yeah. He, he got most so of his knowledge. So how could Aristotle have claimed a teacher of philosophy to have taught him the science that he wrote? He stole those books, those papyri, right. stole them from right. Kemet, and he put his name on them. Correct, correct, correct. And so that's All simply right. the way, and the bottom line is look at it. And you see, when I speak to people in the classics departments, you see, they don't want no part of me <laughs> because I don't get emotional. Right. See, <laughs> see our thing is that see, we get upset. So mm -hmm. they start to character assassinate us. They say, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You're ignorant. You're this. You're that. Because they're hoping that you're going to get emotional with them. Right. But basically, I just stare at them, and I tell mm -hmm. them, after you are through with your emotional rant and rave, let's return back to some intellectual abilities here, because you seem to be very emotional to me. Right, right. You can assassinate they, they my character all you want. You can call me this, you can call me that. But when you start showing me where I am incorrect, then we get a conversation going. Right now, I think you more like the Atlanta Housewives than you are a you. You said that again. You said, I think you're like the Atlanta Housewives what? You are more like the Atlanta Housewives with gossiping and assassinating people's character. Okay. They're emotional. Okay. Right, See, I right. went to the 500th Centennial. Uh, I was invited to participate in uh, the State University's 500th Centennial in 1992 okay. for okay. Columbus discovering America. And I went up mm -hmm. there with all my Olmec uh, information. Okay? And when they started talking about all this great stuff that Columbus and all this other stuff and blase, blase, I brought out my material. You know, they asked me to leave. Fancy. They wanted me to leave. <laughs> see, see what happens. The bottom funny. line was is I wouldn't get emotional with them. I brought out my material. I had books. I had been to Mexico and studied with Dr. Van Sertima in, in the summer of 1984. I had my scientific material out there. I had my anthropological material. I, I had pictures of Dr. Von Wootno's studio with all of the different black um, uh, masks and vessels, 60,000 right. artifacts he has from Africa found in Mexico, along with ankhs and other symbols. Mm -hmm. And so my thing and what I say to the community is don't get mad. Don't get right. angry. Don't get emotional. Get scientific. 
Bring out your material from a scientific perspective. Let them rant and rave. Let them tell you all about how you don't know, know this and you don't know that. But always listen to when they are about to prove to you that what you're saying is incorrect because they can't do it. So once they get you emotional, then you'll never get back to the intellectual endeavor. 